ZTE USA has recently announced the launch of the ZTE Blade Vantage 2 for Verizon Prepaid, so in this video, we're going to be talking about that device. So things have been very busy over at ZTE. They just launched their flagship phone in the US, which is the ZTE Axon 10 Pro. There's been a lot of hype and excitement about that phone, but in addition to the launch of that device, they've also launched the Blade Vantage 2. Now, don't get too excited about this phone. It's definitely a very low-end device, and it's meant for people who occasionally use their device. If you're a power user, you definitely should go the route of the Axon 10 Pro, but if you're just gonna use your device for occasional phone calls and text messages, and maybe a little bit of social media and web browsing, and you don't wanna get a feature phone, because those really aren't worth getting in 2019, then the Blade Vantage 2 might be a decent choice for you. So the first prerequisite is that you have to be using Verizon Prepaid because the phone is locked to that carrier. So if you're a Verizon Prepaid user, then that's great. You can go and get this device right now for $59.99. So it's a very low price tag. And even though there's not much about this phone that is remarkable, I'm really happy to see that we have yet another new device from ZTE in the US market. Now, another interesting thing that I did not feature on this spec list here is that the ZTE Blade Vantage 2 is a GSM only device. I don't know if you've heard, but Verizon is shifting over to becoming a GSM carrier. In fact, they're shutting down their CDMA network by the end of 2019, and at that point, they're going to be GSM only. Visible, which is a prepaid carrier owned by Verizon, is actually already GSM only, so that's a preview to what's to come for the rest of Verizon. Now, along with shutting down their CDMA network is shutting down their 3G network because that does rely on their CDMA infrastructure. So this device does not feature any CDMA technology, which is fine, of course, because like I just said, the network is going away at the end of the year. So I just thought that was a bit interesting. Now the phone features a 5.4 inch display at 480p, so a pretty low resolution, but it does feature an 18 by nine aspect ratio. So that's gonna be a bit taller than your typical 16 by nine display. Now in 2019, it seems like 16 by nine is pretty much on its way out. And that's a good thing because I am a fan of 18 by nine. By having a display that's 18 by nine or taller, if you were to get a device that was 19 by nine or 19 and a half by nine, you're able to fit a lot more content in the display, especially when you're browsing social media, whether that's Instagram or Facebook. Now, when you play standard 16 by nine videos on your 18 by nine device, you will either see black bars in the left or right, or you can crop the video in for a more immersive experience. Now the device features a five megapixel rear camera and a two megapixel front facing camera. So you're definitely not gonna get any photography awards from the ZTE Blade Vantage 2, but at least it does have cameras. Again, this is meant for somebody who really is not a power user, somebody who just wants the bare essentials from their phone, but also does not wanna spend a lot of money. Now the device features 16 gigabytes of internal storage with expansion up to 256 gigabytes with the micro SD card. We get two gigabytes of RAM with the phone, so it's another thing that's not extremely impressive. And it features the MediaTek MT6761 processor, which is also nothing overly impressive. Now the device features a 2050 milliamp hour internal battery, which isn't too bad considering the bare bones specifications of this phone. Because remember, with a 480p display, it will not be using a whole lot of power because it doesn't need to supply resources to as many pixels. Now, one of the cool things about this device, which I'm happy to see too, is that it does feature Wi-Fi hotspot compatibility. Now, I don't remember the exact hotspot plans that you can get with your various plans that you can choose from with Verizon prepaid, but if you get a plan that has hotspot included, then you can definitely use this phone as a hotspot. So at first, it might not appear to be significant or useful to have hotspot built into a very low-end prepaid phone, but if you think about it, if you have maybe a secondary device that's a lot better, like an iPad, then it's really nice having that hotspot feature because you can give your iPad or tablet Wi-Fi 
anywhere that you're at where you get Verizon service. So maybe you wanna spend more money on a tablet that's pretty decent, but then only spend $59.99 on your phone. Then you can use the phone, of course, for text messaging and phone calls, but then use the tablet for actual media consumption. So let me know what you think of that idea. Is that a good way of making the most out of your very low-end budget prepaid phone? I think it's a good approach, especially for older people who generally don't have as good of eyesight and find the iPad or a tablet to be more user-friendly compared to a tiny smartphone. But let me know what you think of the ZTE Blade Vantage 2 for Verizon prepaid. I'm really excited to see that more and more phones are being launched by ZTE in the US and I hope that we see even more phones from them in the near future. But this is Kevin here. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up, and I will see you in the next video.